Hi everyone, uh, my name is Devin. I'm a senior researcher here in the Applied Sports Research Group at LIOMO. Um, today I'm going to try and give some background info on raw data analysis um, using IMUs. Um, I'll do a few demos to really solidify those concepts and hopefully you'll gain a fundamental understanding of the data that we can collect with IMUs and um, so that you can apply this understanding in your own practice. So what is an IMU? Uh, an IMU is a device that can be used to precisely quantify and measure uh, their own motion. So IMUs do this using uh, MEMS-based sensors. Uh, MEMS stands for Microelectromechanical Systems. Uh, it just refers to how the IMUs are manufactured. Um, and the sensors uh, themselves in an IMU are um, typically an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. Um, these are three-axis devices, so it can measure movement in X, Y, and Z in three-dimensional space. In these two videos, we'll focus on data primarily from the accelerometer and the gyroscope. This data is streamed wirelessly over Bluetooth uh, to either the Type R head unit or the LVS app um, at hundreds of data points per second, so it's pretty high frequency. Um, when thinking about raw data from IMUs, it's important to keep in mind that the IMUs detect changes in position, not absolute positions. So um, the data is reported in a coordinate system that is local to the IMU, uh, not the global reference frame. Um, and looking a little bit more closely at that coordinate system, here in this diagram, uh, positive x points uh, to the right along the text of LIOMO on the sensor. Um, positive Y points up, and positive Z points through the body of the sensor. So uh, thinking a little bit more carefully about the accelerometer and the data that the accelerometer reports, it's, it's helpful and instructive to think about um, the accelerometer sensor as um, a ball on a spring. So if you move the sensor around, um, the ball reacts to those motions and the spring will lengthen or contract. And those movements are measured electronically and reported as raw data. Let's demonstrate the X, Y, and Z coordinate um, accelerometer data. So um, here on my desk here, I have a sensor oriented um, flat on the desk. And what I'm going to do is shake it back and forth in the X direction. And you'll see on the LVS screen, the top field there, we see data, accelerometer data being reported in the X direction. Uh, we can do the same thing, of course, in Y, primarily in the Y direction. And if we move the sensor in the Z, coordinate, we see oscillations primarily in Z. So that confirms that we're um, orienting our sensor the way we expect. Uh, data is coming in as expected. Um, one other thing you might notice is uh, the units. So our units are reported in Gs, where 1G is the acceleration due to gravity. Um, and uh, with the sensor here lying flat on the table, we see that gravity is showing up only in the z-axis, as expected. Um, we could, of course, orient the sensor perpendicular, or actually parallel to gravity. So now it's reporting in the y direction. Um, if we align the x-axis parallel to gravity, then we see gravity show up in the x-axis as well. So let's do a, a quick demo here um, to look a little bit more carefully at those oscillations that we viewed a little bit earlier. What I'm going to do is uh, start on the left-hand side of the screen and move the IMU in one direction, in the positive x direction, from call it x equals 0 to x equals 2 or something. Um, and I'm just going to do a 1D, one-dimensional translation from this side to this side. I'm going to do that quickly. I want you to predict what would happen, uh, what would show up in the data. I'll zoom in a little bit here so that we can really see the data come in quickly as it's happening. So now we're seeing, um, we're zoomed in in time, so things will happen faster on the screen. Um, so let me do that demonstration now. Three, two, one. And as you can see, there's a positive 
followed by a negative spike in acceleration x. Hopefully that's your prediction. Hopefully that matches your prediction. Um, I'll do it again just for demonstration purposes. Uh, you see there's a positive and then followed by a negative. So hopefully that uh, matches your prediction. I, I moved the sensor in the x direction and only in the x direction. Um, I accelerated and then I decelerated, um, all while traveling in the positive x direction. So um, that's why we get that behavior. Um, if we do the same thing going backward, so in the negative x direction, I want you to make a prediction on what would show up. So I will accelerate and then decelerate. And you notice we have a negative spike followed by a positive spike instead of a positive followed by a negative. Even though I accelerated and decelerated, I just did it in the opposite direction. So uh, that's because we were moving in the negative x direction. So there's an overall negative sign that changes everything. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, the other thing to look at here is uh, the zero cross. So what is happening at that zero cross? Well, a zero acceleration means that we have no change in velocity. Um, obviously, if we're, not change, if we're not moving at all, then there's no change in velocity. But the other time when there's no change in velocity is when it's a constant non-zero velocity. Um, for example, halfway between my translation, right after I stopped accelerating and just before I started decelerating, if that makes sense. Um, at that instant in time is when there was a constant velocity and we register a zero acceleration. Um, so that's what, you know, that's a good way to interpret zero cross events um, in acceleration data. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is, is motions in a plane. So um, one way you could imagine applying this knowledge is um, if you know that data is coming in, let me zoom out again here, in, um, in only the x and y directions. Right? So if you look at the data here on the screen, we see motions primarily in x and y. Uh, so if you didn't know what was happening uh, with the IMU, if you, didn't, uh, if you couldn't see my hand moving it around, you would still be able to identify the fact that it's moving only in the x and y plane, uh, not up and down in the z plane, because there's no motion, there's no data, there's no accelerations happening uh, up and down. Um, so that's one way that you can easily identify um, planar motions uh, of the IMU. Um, hopefully that was useful for you. Thanks for watching. In the next video, uh, we'll look a little bit more closely at angular velocity, uh, which is the data that is reported by the gyroscope. Thanks again, and we'll see you there.